Hello and welcome back. My name is Domico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So welcome back all my digital media mutants. It is I, the Doctor. So, if you came into the channel early in the year, in January I did a, a series that seemed to be really, really well received about my free NAS box and being able to set up my own FAMP server for web development. So if you look back in my past videos, you can find that FAMP web server set up, which is basically FreeNAS, Apache, MySQL, and PHP all together inside of a jail on a FreeNAS box. Now if you don't know what FreeNAS is, uh, you can take a look over at FreeNAS.org. FreeNAS is basically a version of BSD running as a NAS um, application so it runs from a from a USB drive you can ins put it onto a computer put the USB drive in the computer and then install a bunch of drives in that computer and you have a NAS box uh, just like if you went and bought like a Drobo or um, Netgear or a Buffalo uh, Lynx or uh, I think it's Buffalo Systems um, and then like Linksys makes a NAS box. There's a lot of comp different companies like Synology, Synapnology uh, makes a NAS box. A bunch of different companies make NAS boxes. Um, but I used to have a D-Link NAS and then issues happened with it and it's a long, long story. I ended up actually looking into free NAS and saying, hey, you know what? I could do that myself. I, I have networking experience. I have experience inside of BSD systems. I, I kind of understand all of that stuff. So I built myself a, my own free NAS box. So with that, free NAS has a system called jails. If you're familiar with virtualization, jails are like little VMs. So I have like these little self-contained pieces of the system that can run on top of the other system. So currently right now, if you look at my jails, I'm running three different jails inside of my FreeNAS box. One, I'm running a Plex server, which I might be getting rid of pretty soon. I don't know. I might be switching, I might be switching Plex for uh, MB, and we'll do some videos on that too. Two, I have a BitTorrent transmission jail set up. And then I also have my PHX web server that we built in the video in January set up. And then I also have an OnCloud server and I have another MySQL database set up for Cody, and I also have a VirtualBox jail running, which is running VirtualBox uh, version 4.312, as you can see. So what's really cool is, is these are all self-contained things that can I could stop them and start them independently of each other, and it just it's just a really awesome system to be able to do, because realistically, with having this PHX web server here and having this Cody MySQL server here. I'm running two different versions of Apache because I want it to be able to use PHP my admin as an interface to interact with the database. So I had to install Apache and PH, PHP my uh, admin on both of these. So I have two PH, I have two admin or two Apache rather, two Apache servers running um, to be able to to get this stuff. So realistically, they're the same. They re both of these are. I could have I could have done it in one. I could have just made you know one MySQL database server and just ran everything from that but I thought it would be a little bit better to have separate ones because if this one becomes corrupted the only thing that it is is my Cody movies and that can easily be rebuilt I'm not really worried about that but the stuff from my production web server I am worried about so I wanted that to be off by itself so anyway the cool thing is that FreeNAS lets me use the jail system to self contain some things so what this video is going to be about is not how to work with the FAMP, and we might go back over some other stuff with FAMP later on, but in this video, or in this series, I'm going to show you how to set up your own cloud server. So if you've ever used anything like OneDrive or Google Drive or Dropbox or um, I think those are the major players, in the, at least in, in that industry. So if you've ever used any one of those services, then you know you can pay to play, basically. Right? You have a set amount of space that you purchase every month from them. Now, in the case of some of them, much like YouTube, well, not YouTube, but like in the place of Google, Google, in, the, in all fairness, they do give you like 15 gigs of data storage on their servers. 
Now, I say that because, as I just said, it's on their servers. So, while I'm not a super conspiracy theorist, I like to control my own stuff, especially if it's things that I really care about. So, what I end up doing for a lot of my work, and I do this for clients as well, is that I needed a way that I could easily get my clients work and be able to have a secure way to share stuff with them, get them their projects back, and things of that nature. So I looked at doing one of the bigger services and doing something like a Dropbox and paying like the yearly fee of a hundred bucks and doing that. Which, if that's the way you want to go, and no must, no fuss, no setup, then do that. That's completely fine with me. I'm not, I'm not demonizing those types of services. But I'm the type of person that I like to control the data that I'm having to, to work with. The other thing is, is that I wanted to run my own cloud um, for the purposes of when, when customers upload video footage to me, I didn't want to have to go download that from somewhere because that's having to, them having to upload it, me having to download it, and then me having to download it again or me having to upload it again to give it back to them. So I wanted a way to kind of make that process a little bit easier. So I looked into running my own cloud. So enter on cloud. On cloud is basically that. As you can see, I have files, I have activities, galleries, I can even add applications to this. Um, I've got my personal settings for this, which I'm not going to go into, and I've got users. If you look down here at my workings file folder, my, my business partner and I, we share files in this working file folder. So she set up to actually be able to access this folder from outside of my network. Um, and be able to look inside of there and look into the into the cloud server and say, oh, okay, I need to work with this and this and this, and it's really cool that I can be able to do that. I keep all of my eBooks actually on the server, so I can get to my eBooks at any given time, no matter where I am in the entire world, as long as I have internet access, right? So it's really cool to be able to do. So I'm going to show you how you can set that up inside of FreeNAS yourself, and we'll start that in the next video.